Good morning, everyone. So let's start with taking a peek into the future. Let's go to a day in the life of Rahul in 2025. Right? So Rahul is a successful professional who's risen the ranks of his organization through sheer hard work and intelligence. Right? Over the last eight months, he's put his heart and soul into a project that he's actually spent long weekends on, long nights on to kind of bring it to a stage where today he's ready to present all of that to his boss. The meeting is at set at 10.30. It's an extremely important meeting. Something that will actually determine the growth of the company as well as his own professional growth in the organization. Right? So he wakes up early in the morning, does his exercise routine, uh, looks at his fitness tracker which tells him that he's done great, uh, he feels good about it, gets ready, slaps on his uh, smart watch. Along with that, he also slaps on a small wearable patch on his chest, something that's been recommended by his cardiologist about a year ago. He gets into his vehicle, drives to work, reaches the office by about 9 o'clock, his meeting is at 10.30. Right? So he starts going through the notes, looking at, you know, just getting all the figures in place, all the numbers, uh, ensuring that they're all right. And at about 9.45, he feels a slight palpitation in his heart. He just brushes it off, thinking it must be because of the stress. Right? After about 20 minutes, he receives a call from the reception, which he doesn't, he decides not to take, because, you know, he wants to be in the right mind frame when he's getting into the meeting. Three minutes after that, he gets a call from his cardiologist. And this time, Rahul is a bit worried. He wonders why is his cardiologist calling him like early in the morning. He decides to quickly take that and get back to work, so he takes the call. His cardiologist, in a calm voice, tells him, Rahul, please get down to your reception. I've had an ambulance waiting for you there. There are paramedics inside, they know what to do. Don't panic, everything's all right. Just come to the hospital. I'm waiting for you there. Right? So Rahul, you know, calls up his boss and tells him, hey boss, you know what, I'll have to push the meeting for maybe a second half of the day. Uh, I really got a medical emergency that I've got to rush to. The boss complies, though not very happy, he complies with that. Rahul goes to the ambulance, the paramedics kind of slip on a few detectors on him, sensors on him. Uh, they go to the hospital. From there, once he reaches the hospital, he's wheeled into the emergency care where his cardiologist is waiting for him. Uh, two hours after, uh, once he's stabilized, Rahul actually asks the cardiologist what happened. And the cardiologist says, you know what, you would have had a heart attack in the next one day, which is why I had you wheeled into the hospital. Sounds like science fiction? Maybe in 2018, yes. But not in the near future. We are looking at systems which are going to be so intelligent, machines which are going to be so intelligent, they're going to be continuously monitoring your health parameters, making the decisions, predicting what can possibly go wrong, and then get the whole corrective action in place even before the event has occurred, right? Welcome to the world of intelligent machines that actually care for you. Right, now let's go back from the future to a few decades back, right? And try to look at some of the major technological changes that came by and drove certain revolutions in the society, changing the course of humanity as we know it, right? I'll, I'll not go up over all of those technological inter interventions, but maybe some key, some of them. Let's start with the steam engine, right? And that was that led to the transportation revolution. Uh, people got from large distances from point A to point B. Goods and people got there faster, thereby triggering a lot of economic activity and prosperity. We had electricity uh, drive industrial revolution. Uh, we had the digital revolution being driven by personal computing. The internet, of course. Uh, the information revolution and of course the mobiles which 
ushered in the telecom revolution in, in much of the world. Right? While this is a quick snapshot of how technological changes have brought in and ushered in revolutions, all of these have actually driven to create dramatic changes in the way things existed and also create prosperity in the meantime because of all the economic activity that was unleashed. Cut to 2018, my belief is we are again bang in the middle of a great revolution taking place. There are multiple technological drivers aiding this revolution like augmented reality, virtual reality. You have gene editing tools like CRISPR which allows you to edit a faulty DNA and insert a proper one. But the most dominant technology that's actually driving this current revolution that we are in the midst of is artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence or AI. Now what really is AI? I will not get into the technical details of it, but I suffice to say AI is the human endeavor to actually create non-human intelligence. Right? So what is so great about AI and why has it become such a big buzzword? And not just buzzword, it's actually been adapted and adopted into much of all the aspects of our lives today without us actually realizing it. If you look at consumer technologies, right, we are already exposed to some of the power of AI. I mean, people do online shopping, so you have your recommendations of what to shop for coming from AI-driven engines. We do travel booking online. We do banking online. So while these are some of the consumer touch points of where AI is actually behind the scenes enabling a better experience, a better optimal results for you, AI has actually crept into much of all the sectors around. Right? We see AI entering into transportation, into logistics. In logistics, you know, uh, the, the best routes are actually determined by an AI system to deliver optimal results for the for the for the logistics head. We have we have actually AI entering into education, into healthcare, and even into, even into agriculture, right? So you have today smart systems which actually take multiple sources of data of rain patterns, of uh, wind patterns, of soil conditions, of moisture level in the soil, and actually kind of recommend what crops should be grown at what point in time to get an optimal yield. Right? So all of these things are becoming true gradually as we speak, which is where I'm saying AI has had a second coming. Now why do I say it's second coming? Right? Because AI is not something new. It's been around for the last few decades. But what's really changed is a lot of factors that actually today make AI a viable option were it there before. Computing, large-scale powerful computing has become extremely affordable and available. Data, extremely important for building your AI algorithms, they become available in the form that they can be used for your building your AI algorithms. Now all of these things have gone together to make the whole research in AI more powerful, more rapid and we see a lot of innovations happening in the AI research community itself and that itself driving into much of our lifestyles, right? So what is it that AI can do that humans haven't been able to do, right? While there are of course limitations that AI today uh, has, some of the strengths that AI possesses is the ability to synthesize, to process data from multiple different sources and then be able to look at correlations between all those data points, understand patterns and use those patterns to not just give an analysis but also to predict. Right? The most important ability that I think AI possesses is the ability to take in all these diverse sources of data and predict. This was something that's not possible by human beings to be able to process and synthesize all those disparate sources of data. So using 
we today we are at the cusp of time where we see AI slowly and gradually getting into all the spheres of our lives. I mean, some of them we are in touch with, some of them, some of them happening behind, and we don't actually get to see this. So let me take a topic that's close to my heart uh, and something that we actually work in either systems as well, healthcare. So before I start with healthcare, let me just uh, give a quick overview of how healthcare, how do we see healthcare today, right? There are two parts to healthcare. One is where we actually detect or diagnose a condition. The second part is where, based on the diagnosis or the detection of a condition, you actually treat it. Right? So these are two parts of healthcare. Having said that, let's take a moment to understand what are the imperatives that exist in the healthcare system as of now. Healthcare today is discontinuous and reactive. Now, what do I mean by discontinuous? Well, unless you actually go to a center to get yourself tested for your own health parameters, there is no way to know what is wrong or right with you. So essentially, there is an act of discrete collection of data, which means you go to a center, you get yourself tested. So that's discrete, that's discontinuous. Leading to the next point, because of because your data collection or your health parameter sensing is discrete and discontinuous, the treatment is also reactive. Without knowing what's wrong with you or what could potentially be wrong with you, there is no way treatment can start. That is how healthcare exists as of today. But the real power of AI comes when this entire paradigm is shifted is changed to make the healthcare system continuous and predictive. What do we mean by continuous? We just took one small example of Rahul whose health parameters were continuously being monitored by the patch that he wore on his chest. Right? And that data was sent to an AI engine. I mean, it understood his own personal health profile and alerted his cardiologist that Rahul is at risk of a cardiac attack sometime in the future. And the corrective action was already taken basis that prediction. That is really the power of AI. And think about it, if not just this, if you are able to detect cancers early for example, even before it manifests as cancer, some slight changes that are seen basis again data taken from diverse sources about your own self all going into actually being able to predict that you are at disposition of this particular cancer then that fundamentally changes the equation today india suffers from about 50 percent mortality of all cancers meaning that 50 percent of the people who are diagnosed with cancer die at a very early stage and all because of one particular reason, early detection would have given a chance to these people to survive longer. That did not happen because our health detection systems are discontinuous and reactive, not continuous and proactive. While that is a state, what is it that AI systems coming into the entire AI system, as I explained, will change? Now let's look at the detection part, right? And I and I think we, we explained briefly about how continuous monitoring will actually help change how frequently you need to get yourself treated. Because early detection or early prediction of problems will re lead to the next phase, which is your therapy. Now, even in therapies, AI is playing a part where much of your therapies are being can potentially be recommended by your AI system to a, uh, to a physician and the physician confirms that it is in the right because the ability of an AI system to read all of that data, synthesize it and then present it to a physician with a recommendation is a lot more powerful than the human being himself being able to maybe look at about 50 patterns to be able to make this treatment choice. Now, not just this, let's look at how AI can 
fundamentally also change the other part of medical, uh, the healthcare system, which is the medication part of it. Now, for for a tablet to reach your hand in the form of a tablet, there would generally be about five thousand molecules, which go through a long and tedious process of about twelve years, burning through anywhere between five hundred five thousand to seven thousand crores, or 800 to 1 billion dollars before it becomes a drug in your hand. So here we are really talking about a long process and lots of money being spent on actually medications. Imagine a situation where because of AI going through all of this process, the whole timeline comes down to about 6 to 8 months. We have a situation where the costs subsequently also comes down to about 50% of it. Now, what does all of these three components or all of these three interventions of AI in healthcare translate really to, to a common man? Right? It really translates to better health outcomes. How is the case? Your, your conditions are detected much earlier. Your treatment therapies are more effective because a lot of data has gone behind to actually suggest the most effective treatment for you as a person. And secondly, the cost of your own medication has come down so drastically that the whole cost of healthcare system comes down. And not just the cost, we are talking about really better health outcomes. So this is really the potential of how AI can fundamentally change one sector and that is where the world is leading to. Intelligent machines that care for you as human beings. So is it all sunshine and no dark clouds? I don't believe so. As with any, any major uh, technological shift, any major technological revolution that happens, there are going to be some who are going to be adversely impacted. And that is where ecosystem stakeholders will play a large part in actually managing this massive shift, this massive transition happening. So what are we talking about? We're talking about being able to actually manage the change by sensitizing and upskilling our own people to be able to manage and join this revolution and not resist it. I like to leave with a small thought, right? Nothing in life is permanent. The only thing that's for sure is change. Embrace it and be better off. Resist it and feel the pain. So I urge you people to join this AI revolution all around become a part of it, rebel in it, and build, help build a better future for us. Thank you all.